Welcome everyone to our studio visit series. I'm joined today by a good friend of mine, Samantha Combs. Samantha just finished her MFA at Louisiana State University. And Samantha did not, uh, she graduated during the pandemic. So she wasn't really able to do some of the really exciting things that most people in their final year get to do. So I wanted to stop in and talk to her about her new body of work, which I think is really great. I'm excited to share with you guys and give us give us a chance to um, celebrate her major accomplishment. Hi, Sam, how's it going? Good, I'm good, how are you? I'm doing great, and I'm really glad to be talking to you today about your work. I've been following everything, you know, since you began, um, was, it's been three years already. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's over. <laughs> And I, you know, I knew, of course, knew all about your work before you went into graduate school. And I'm really curious to talk to you about how you feel you've evolved since that, those last paintings you did before you went in. Yeah, uh, big transformation in a lot of ways, but I think in other ways, it's still kind of similar. Um, so before graduate school, I was making large scale kind of abstract expressionist paintings, um, emulating Joan Mitchell, you know, for the most part. Uh, but I was, you know, very into action painting, like just performative painting. And that's like the joy that I got out of uh, my artwork. Um, and then I started grad school at LSU. Uh, first semester, I was kind of doing the same things some monotypes and I was exploring some other kind of mediums, but still very much like abstract expressionism in my head. Um, but I was also trying to kind of add on a lot of psychological meaning into my paintings. Like I was really reaching a little bit and uh, I realized that and I kind of got put in check when I was there. And so my second semester, I, um, I wanted to find a material that had an inherent psychological meaning because that's what I was so interested in. I wanted to find, I wanted my work to be very rich in psychological content. Um, and I re was revisiting Jeanine Antony's Lick and Lather piece. You know, I was like obs obsessed with it in undergrad and then I, you know, kind of forgot about it and then I just got back to it. And, um, yeah, I was just very excited about her use of materials, just chocolate and, and soap. And, you know, you, you're eating, you can eat chocolate, you can wash soap, you can, I mean, and it also could look like another material, you know, like soap could look like wax. You know, it's just a really funky, strange thing. And uh, I kind of just had like a moment where I was like, I'm going to make soap. <laughs> It was a simple kind of thing. I was just like, I'm going to try this out. And, you know, in grad school, they push you to experiment to the nth degree in your first year, especially. And I was like, I'm going to show them <laughs> that I'm experimenting. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I, I started to make soap uh, out of lard and lye um, and uh, water, not distilled water. I was using tap water um, because the impurities in the water will leave yellow spots in the soap. So it will change over time. It looks really gross, which I liked a lot. Um, and, you know, I started out making soap uh, in these kind of pipe forms, like these sculptural like uh, pipe forms. I was making silicone molds of PVC pipe parts and filling them with soap, filling them with a self-help book text. So the paper from old self-help books I was collecting hair, just disgusting things you might find in a clogged drain. Um, and then, so I did, I got into soap. Uh, second year, I was um, taking a good amount of courses in the uh, communications department, in the performance studies program specifically. And, you know, I know you know that I was always really interested in performance work. You know, I had done it in a little bit in undergrad. Uh, but I revisited it in uh, school, the second year especially, um, and I was really to, able to explore these kinds of psychological ideas I had, but in a larger format. Um, I was doing some immersive installations and video work, sound work, and the like. Uh, third year, I revisited the soap as a material for my thesis, so I kind of got back to soap 
and the self-help book paper. Um, but still like uh, psychological ideas and ideas of memory and like archival kinds of ideas of memory, where that stuff is stored, what it could look like. All of that kind of imagining like ran its course all the way through grad school. It just kind of showed in different forms along the way. I was, I was really interested in the way that you progressed through graduate school from, from the way that you were painting, which I always thought was just really beautiful, um, to you really enriched the contents of what you do, where I, I, I felt like you started to speak more comfortably in your, in your actual voice. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, yes. <laughs> I think, I think, um, you know, and yeah, thinking about before grad school or like the first semester and just where I was in a lot of areas, like in I, ways of my life, like emotionally, like maturity wise, uh, confidence wise, and my, you know, artistic voice, all of that stuff just definitely gradually. Um, matured as I went along with it. And I was just able to trust how weird and imaginative my ideas were. I think a lot of, in the beginning, I thought that those kinds of imaginative, quirky, strange kinds of ideas were, I thought people thought they were stupid. <laughs> so I kind of wouldn't speak up. I'd be like, oh, that's like maybe a little too funky or weird or like sounding fluffy or just stupid. I thought, you know, I just kind of thought that. So I but yeah, and then I was like, you know what? No, this is weird. Like, these are cool, strange ideas. Like, I don't think anyone's really doing this. I mean, I'm sure somewhere in the world, of course, someone's doing it, but yeah. <laughs> well, I, I had the same experience in graduate school where I, I was in some ways more serious about my work than I am now where I'm more, not that I'm not serious about it, but that I, I trust the idiosyncrasies yeah, completely. Mm -hmm. Whereas before I was more, um, I overthought them and I would edit them out. I would take out the most interesting part. The most of interesting thing. <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 this is the crazy thing that makes me. Or this is the thing I can't really articulate super well because it's not this like linear like step-by-step -step thing that I know people are gonna be like oh okay yes understood you know yeah, yeah totally yeah. um and the background that you have in mental health can you talk a little bit about that and and how you got to be so interested in the psychological um yeah so I have an undergrad degree in psychology and an undergraduate degree in painting so I double majored you know, I think, yeah, I've always been inc incredibly interested in psychology, um, the re personality, you know, emotional kinds of components of people, how those things change over time, uh, ideas of, you know, social anxiety, just um, general anxiety, depression, and how they're experienced uh, by different individuals and how that reflects in their behavior. I mean, I've just always been super fascinated by that. And, you know, it's been a while since I've like um, really like picked up like a hard uh, scientific book that is, you know, based in like um, neuropsychology. Like I, a while ago I had that, but I kind of lost some of that knowledge. So I think I approached my work um, with more of a poetic understanding of how, you know, emotional contents and thoughts and cognitive things, how those things may look, how they move, how are they processed in our brain and like, what are they made of? Like, again, I know I've already kind of said that, but that imagining and of what that kind of substance is, uh, has just had me going all throughout this whole, this whole thing. Uh, yeah. I've, I've always talked a lot about, um, your, like artwork is a metaphor and metaphors are so incredibly important to to human beings like we build our entire realities off of metaphors this is that or, or we we take our our memories or our our experiences and we have to create some sort of framework mm. for handling them yeah. and those frameworks are metaphors and we have um 
probably unconscious and sometimes conscious like associations with objects or things in the real world that you know impact us emotionally and i think that's what i was excited about when you got to the soap because you started saying oh there it is there's my my metaphor um, right can you talk a little bit about what you're what the soap is doing in your work functionally not just visually um yeah so soap again i already said it's just initially i was attracted to it because yes it is a metaphor for like the psychological content for ideas of you know self-cleansing self-care um and so that was the initial attraction and the materiality of it. It's like this weird plastic ephemeral thing and the metaphor of it being washed away from itself. Like it was just a lot of metaphor upon metaphor there that was um, really attractive to me. Um, but, you know, the way that I think about the soap in my work, specifically the like relief paintings, like the, the most of my MFA show was, um, was showing uh, really the soap kind of it represented the act of washing my body. I mean, it literally served as itself. And um, so the idea that I'm thinking about in regards to my MFA show, like the thing that dictated what that whole body of work was, I kind of, I, I thought about um, my experience in the shower, like the, and washing the daily kind of grime of the ruminations, the thoughts, the emotions, anything that may be negative or really, or anything, just the kind of um, chatter that happens in your head. Uh, you know, the soap is acting with water to wash that stuff off of my body, off of my mind, you know, metaphorically, of course, uh, and that soap and all that collects my shower drain. Uh, so the soap is kind of, it almost acts like as a, a substrate it's like rock formations. It's almost like geological. And, you know, it's a huge association there. Um, and that stuff builds up layers over time in that kind of imagined subterranean place. Uh, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's probably a lot of other things <laughs> as well. <laughs> so I'm just like not, not getting that right now. <laughs> no, I, I really like um, the imagery that you just created with your words of this imagined, uh, I'm sort of thinking of like this cavern of all of your daily emotions that exist underground. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, I, <laughs> I recently watched Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and like the sewer <laughs> system in there. And I was like, holy shit. I was like, what if I could make a sewer system out of soap and like self-help book paper? <laughs> and I just could just create this crazy cavernous world of like, um, you know, like, uh, it's essentially a self portrait or a portrait of people that live in a household and like, yeah, just, uh, yeah, I can get really imaginative with it really quickly. <laughs> yeah. And I, I like that it com it came from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, <laughs> and it didn't necessarily come from that, but I mean. What I really liked about your artist statement was you, you actually refer to the shower, and I guess this is where you're becoming more poetic, um, as the cathedral. It's like this place um, where you, you go t daily to sort of not not worship but like we're cleansing like the church is this cleansing place and I, I really was interested in that language um so I get the visual of you thinking of like these subterranean spaces but do you think of other like higher spaces this could go in terms of the cathedral language you're using hmm Probably. Yeah. I don't think it's exclusive to like something being underneath, you know, uh, I think I just kind of went, you know, I was again in grad school, I was fascinated with that area just because I was really stressed out my first year in the shower was that place for me. But, uh, you know, it could be, the, I mean, you're hiking, right. And you have like a contemplative experience at the top of a mountain or there's, there's certain locations that probably have that kind of spiritual resonance or just a place where you're able to contemplate, feel safe. There's, there's a sense of privacy and, and safety there. Um, I could see that. Yeah. I haven't really thought about it a lot, but 
um, definitely something to explore. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, the other trend that your work did, it grew and contained this throughout was this um, sense of accumulation. Like no matter what you do, you always have little parts that become big parts. Can you talk a little bit about like why either, either because you're crazy and you need that or <laughs> why the little parts becoming the big parts? You know, it's something I've always been super attracted to repetition mm -hmm. <laughs> and just something like visually it's, I feel like it's like a strictly visual thing where, you know, like we're looking at like a, like recycled cardboard, like behind a grocery store and it's all compact, just the amount of visual information there and the amount of small shapes and colors and slivers and striations of whatever the material is like my eyes are just, you know, I'm just drawn to it. And it's something, uh, you know, in that repetition, um, at least in the sense of making that, you know, you're able to get lost in that and I'm able to be present in that repetition. Um, and so presence is super important for me, like in painting, uh, you know, when I'm painting at least large scale, you know, uh, I am very present in the moment uh, while I'm making them. But while I'm making these soap pieces, it's a totally different process and it's like scientific. It's like, I'm like a little scientist with my gloves and my mask just so I don't get lie anywhere, you know, and get a chemical burn. <laughs> so it's different. But then, you know, once I make all of my um, soap and paper like pieces, I will start cutting them up and arranging them and like, just allowing myself to like dive in and get hyper focused into like, just this massive kind of like, well, not necessarily massive, but like a world of like, just mark making. And I like to get lost in that. And I want my viewers to feel kind of like they're getting lost in the amount of information there. This uh, obsession with mark making, or the, we all, all artists tend to have these weird obsessions with the process that in some, in some ways in certain people, it almost lends itself to psychology because we're, we're trying to figure out why we're so obsessed. <laughs> Do you feel that or is it just me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've realized like during my time in school that I am really obsessive. <laughs> like yeah. I'm really obsessive, like neurotic slash obsessive. And yeah, I, I enjoy it though. I like getting obsessed, you know, while I'm working because it, I, I you know, I, it allows me to get a lot of work done. <laughs> And uh, again, like the sense of time and like, I, I don't really, it almost feels like I don't have any control of the amount of time I'm going to spend because I'm so obsessed with like whatever the task is or whatever I've put in front of myself. I'm like, I'm going to do this. <laughs> and then I know once I'm actually finished with the project or finished with whatever the piece is, like, I, you know, it feels great. It's like I'm putting myself through a psychological test to like see if I did it or not. <laughs> You know. and doing it is vague and rant like what is it that you did you you don't know but you did it <laughs> yeah yeah oh yeah <laughs> yeah I, I I think about in my second year I did this big installation where um I it's crazy it's not that crazy I don't know I actually don't know if it's crazy because <laughs> I'm obsessive <laughs> but um like I had done it was this initially a project like a prompt from um, the installation class I was in, in the communications department. And um, I, what I basically did, I just, I put paper all over, you know, I lined the walls of this room with paper, the floor and the ceiling as well. So it was like encased in paper. And I wrote passages all over it, essentially like freely associating and just thought, emotion, whatever. You know, I'd paint the words so they were big. I'd also write them so they were small, so there were scale differences. And then I put a layer of white paper all over the top of that. And I invited people to come in and tear through it and expose these thoughts, essentially. And then it was like 
two weeks before my like review <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to do it all over again. <laughs> we're like, what? Like, that's crazy. Why would you do that? I was like, I, I don't know. I have to prove it to myself. So I did it again, but like with more thought and I um, ended up doing like five layers of paper lined on all the walls, the floor and the ceiling and invited people again to come into the space that was like white, very sterile, looked like solitary confinement or something. Um, there's sound playing, you know, there's a certain kind of lighting that sound, it sounds like you're in a subterranean place because there's like this goopy water sounds and mixtures of these clips I kind of put together. Um, so the people would come in, they'd tear away the layers. And then as they tore, you know, the next layer of paper would be um, a darker uh, valley with red. And it would just get deeper and deeper as you literally dug deeper into the psyche, which was like the idea. It's like psychoanalysis. They were like little excavators kind of finding stuff. Um, and they like ripped through it and then they'd find passages and then more people would come in. And like some people would tear really aggressively, it kind of pissed me off, but I was like, I can't, that, I'm not gonna say anything because this is what I wanted. <laughs> but it was like really a massive experiment just to see what people like would do or how they would behave when you kind of tell them to rip something apart. <laughs> what interests me in that is I, I like the, um, the leftover, the torn parts afterwards. Right. On the floor. Yes. And the torn parts, like they ended up looking like, at least in the beginning, they ended up looking like wounds or flowers, which was a really kind of, uh, you know, interesting thing. Um, and then like once that whole thing was over, I, you know, recycled all that paper. And then I made this really large wall piece that was like just stacked paper. It was really, really it was like eight by nine feet or something. And um yeah, so I recycled all that paper and I kind of, I called it a cross section of what I actually wanted that installation to be, mm -hmm. you know, five layers of paper was, it was like number didn't mean anything. It was just like as much as I could do. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so that big red piece um, was super cool. It had innumerable layers of this paper. And then that idea of cross sections, like taking a out of like a psychological, some sort of inner psyche of an individual and exposing it and putting it on the wall. Like that idea kind of brought me actually into my thesis. Okay. Yeah. It's very interesting to see the processes connect in those ways where you take one piece and it becomes another piece and it becomes another thing and it just constantly evolves, but it spirals instead of linear moves. Yeah, it's always like <laughs> what's next in from from the last piece do you see where are you gonna jump to? Yeah. From there. Um I, I'm still very interested in the soap and the paper as like a medium. So I'm not gonna like just drop that and like move on to something totally different. Um, so I'm still gonna work with that. I just I wanna work with other forms. I think there's a variety of forms it can take. Um, you know, like I have two behind me right now. They're small and they're mobile. They're not like heavy or anything. So I'm probably gonna continue making just some smaller works because um, people are like that, that they're small and they can like take them and, and easily put them on a wall in their home. Um, but, you know, I'm thinking sculpturally as well. You know, if I had this type of work, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be on the wall. I know I'm thinking about carving into it. Maybe um, I've been starting to think about um, certain geological forms like craters and canyons and, you know, just pulling a little bit from, you know, geological time and the structures that are created. Um, and then just kind of literally just drawing a straight line right over to my practice, but using the artificial kind of confectionery materials that I am. Um, so that's one thing that I'm thinking of. Also, um, thinking about water and how like kinetic water with my pieces and the actual soap changing over time as water is interacting with it in whatever way. That's like an obvious thing, I think. Uh, it's just the, like the mechanics of it. I, I, this is something I need to work out, but. Yeah. 
other things too. I don't know. Other weird materials, maybe embed some fossils in there. Yeah. We'll follow those idiosyncrasies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had a visit with Trenton Doyle Hancock, my lap, my thesis year. And it's basically what he said, right? Just like, he's like, this is weird. <laughs> And I was like, and it was obviously like, that's a compliment, but he's like, this is like a strange, strange thing. Like, he's just like, just keep going. And he was just like, what is a material that is like the opposite of soap for you? Like, what's the opposite of that? So he was kind of basically talking about just introducing another material into the mix that was um, just very different from like those metaphors and that just kind of brought you and you had to kind of make some like really, you know, strange kind of associations. Like, anyway. Thank you so much, Sam, for joining us. It was great to talk to you and I'm excited about all the new stuff you've made and I'm excited to see what else you do. If you guys wanna learn more about Sam's work, uh, you can visit her website and thank you so much, Sam. You're welcome. <laughs>